Hi, and welcome back to the Digital Job Site for this second of two parts of the tutorial series that I titled A Tale of Two Pitches, which is posted at the Digital Job Site blog at finehomebuilding.com. In the first video, we took a look at some of the requirements, conditions, and reasons for an off angle hip framing uh, requirement. And in this video, I want to take a look at the rafters, the way that the actual framing components look to construct an off angle hip valley framing situation. But what I've got here is Bryce standing up in a ceiling, a sea of ceiling joists and uh, getting ready to frame a roof. But to get going with the video, I'm going to shut these shadows off and then um, yeah, we'll just move over and look at this generic box model which I created and explained in the, the first video. And the part I intended to show in that video but neglected to was to discuss the overhang framing conditions in an off-angle hip valley situation. And if you remember looking straight down at the top of this off-angle hip framing, the, the hip and valley are not at 45 degree angles to the to the plates. Let's see, I've got to click this here. And in th this situation, it's about 30, a little less than 34 degrees rather than 45. And th the other byproduct of those conditions are that the that uh, the overhangs need to be dealt with. Quite a few things need to be dealt with. The overhangs are just another one of them. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to pick these two uh, roof wall lines and then offset them. Uh, let's just offset them. 16 inches is a common overhang width. I'll take the protractor tool for a guideline here and pivot around. Anytime you get this protractor tool jumping to these different surfaces, just put it on the surface you want and hold the shift key to lock the inference, then it'll behave. So now we're going to take our offset line and put it down to line it up in the roof plane of the shallow pitch of the roof just by grabbing that overhang line. And now when I draw this out, it will continue the plane of the roof so that you can see this roof would continue out to meet a line 16 inches away from the wall and to create a 16 inch overhang, which is all well and good, except that when we go over, because there's two separate pitches, the roof slopes uh, trend down at different rates. So if we put in a guideline here to show the pitch of this roof, but we fill in the roof plane, you can see we created a, a roof overhang surface, but the problem is it doesn't line up with the pitch of the roof. There's this kink in the roof plane. And to fix that, there's a couple, uh, generally the factors that are exchanged are the width of the overhang or the height of the fascia. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to throw a couple guidelines in there. I'm just going to grab this overhang line and move it in to where it needs to be. So now both of these roof planes line up with the roof if we get pivot down at an angle where you can see up the roof plane, you can see it's it's all flat on both of the roofs. So the, the roof planes are correct and the adjustment we made was in the width of the overhang. The first one we did was 16 inches, this is 10 and about 3 quarters inches. So with that compromise we can uh, put in, let's see, let's just do this. and control, moving these lines up, there we go, put our, just going to put a soffit in here that will pull down and make a fascia, so let's just call this fascia 8 inches, just type 8 enter there, and so you can kind of get an idea of what the roof conditions would look like if the fascia height remained the same, the compromise we made was in the width of the soffit. So that's method A. Method B is 
to change the fascia height. So I'm just going to back up here. Let's see, let's put that soffit back in. Okay, let's do that. And to demonstrate this, let's see, I'm just going to put a 16 inch guideline here, get this going in the right direction, and type 16. Then I'm just going to select this piece of geometry here and make it a group so that it doesn't mess with everything else. I'm just jump into this group edit mode. Let's see, the soffit is not part of that geometry. Okay. So I'm just going to take this line and move it down to where it would need to be for the 16 inch overhang. And then let's just take this line. Yeah, I've got a line there. And we'll just move him out to there. So now when we get out of this group edit mode, you can see that the overhangs are the same width. Oops, get my tape measure tool to behave. There we've got one foot four, 16 inches out, just like this other soffit. But the difference is the fascia height is different. And so those are those are the compromises. If if a person chose to do that, you would just have a fascia that that looked like that. So the fascias are different heights. And then I suppose if you wanted the same fascia height that, um, let's see, we can draw, go back into this. Let's just explode that group there. This will probably get a little bit funky when I try to do this. Let's see what we can get here. There we go. So if we pull the soffit down a couple more inches, let's see, three, we can just pull these pieces down three inches. That's what it would look like with e equal overhangs and equal fascia heights. So you can see those are the, the factors involved in the overhang design. And the first method we showed of Changing the width of the overhang is, is the least conspicuous overall, in my opinion, but uh, any architect and any owner or designer is going to have a different opinion about that and make decisions accordingly. But I wanted to go through those uh, rather lengthy, that rather lengthy discussion to get you familiar with how this framing is done. I'm having a little bit of trouble orbiting back in here on Bryce to go through the rafter framing business here. In this model, I made the decision to change the overhang width and keep the fascia level as well to go with the style idea of the ridge line that lines up. But we're going to do the onion trick and rather than peeling an onion, we're just going to put the layers on the onion and reconstruct this model. And to keep things speeded up, I'm going to hire hide Bryce and his other, the other decorations there, and then we can just use this layers box to put the roof together. And although you can't do this on a real job, you can do it here, so I'm gonna. And uh, we're just gonna put up the hip and ridge members, which will just balance in midair, and, and our model, which is pretty handy, and then we'll put in the common rafters. So that's all, that's all fairly standard roof framing construction as if the spans were the same and the pitches were the same. But if we look from the top, you can see that, let's see, let's zoom in here on where the hip intersects the wall plate. And you can see a couple of things here. One is, if I can get zoomed in there, Kind of a big model so it jumps around kind of funny but here i'm just going to hold the shift key and reference a corner and you can see that this hip intersects at 53 degrees and the complement to that angle is 33.7 so rather than being 45 on both sides it's uh, those two complementary angles 53 and 37 and if you We'll zoom back out here. 
You can see those guidelines running through at this off angle, giving the hip and belly framing its name. And you can see that those lines just kiss the sides of this valley rafter, which are in the same orientation. So the first thing about the hip valley roof configuration, don't get dizzy here while I pivot around the model, is that the hip and valley um, run at some angle other than 45. And then another interesting thing, which is a little bit unusual, is the way that these angles meet at the bottom. And I've got this, this um, rafter is notched out to accommodate half-inch sheathing. That's why there's a space between the rafter. But they're not um, they're not centered up the same way. I've they're centered up at a point that's on the outside of the sheathing. I'm going to go underneath here, and you can see that that this point is 45 degrees, or this point is a half inch away from each of these walls. But if you look on the inside of the room, inside of the structure, as I pivot around, I'm doing this kind of slowly so it doesn't jump so bad. But you can see the the valley rafter does not come through the center of the corner of the framing on the inside. It's kind of close on the outside. But the location of that hip, rather than everything being centered up on a 45 degree angle from the inside corner to the outside corner of the wall plates, the whole angle is determined out here at the very end to get the fascia to line up. And I think if I put the click the fascia layer on here, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Because the and the point is that this very outside corner of the fascia is what determines all the other geometry. And this this fascia line lines up with the inside corner of the valley framing on the other side. But you can see how off centered this looks compared to framing at a 45 degree angle or matching roof pitches. So that's one of the unusual things that shows up in this off-angle hip framing situation. But if we back out a little bit more here to get a look at the model again, I can click on the the rake panels which are pretty much the same other than the fact that they're at different pitches. The rake panels on this end that will support this overhang have to be coplanar with the roof it's on, so the plumb cuts, seat cuts, etc. on that fascia is at a different angle than the fascia on this end, just because of the different roof pitches. And while we're doing this part, I'm going to put in the gable framing layer. Shows a, one method of framing up the gables, so those, there's all those parts of the model and how all these different components come together. At the same time, we put the, the gable framing in the steeper gable. So with, with that shown, I'm just going to go in and put in the jack rafters. And that's possibly one of the more interesting parts of this framing. Because as you can see, looking straight down, Let's see, I'm going to shut off a couple things here, as in the floor sheathing and the floor framing to simplify our model a little bit. Let's just take the walls out of there as well. So now we're just looking at the, the roof framing geometry. It's kind of handy to, to set these different uh, elements up in different layers to switch them on and off. But looking straight down at this off-angle framing, see if I can click out the ceiling joists. I'm going to take those out too. I did put those on a separate layer. Okay. Now we just have the rafters. And looking straight down at a conventional framed roof instead of an off-angle framed roof, every um, valley rafter, the valley rafters and hip rafters would typically be straight across from each other because they're meeting at a 45 degree angle. In this, in this condition, although the rafters are spaced the same distance on each of these sides, I just put them at 16 inches on center, going both ways. They um, use 16 inches both ways. They don't line up at the hips and valleys. And the other thing 
you can see here is that the angles, the cheek cuts on these jack rafters are different. The ones on the steep roof are um, less than 45, typically thought of that way, and these are more than 45. And those angles are all determined, as I said, from a line that connects. I'm going to put this line through here. Just go right down on this corner of the fascia. I'm going to zoom out with the zoom extents tool. There we go. We got one way out because I left those other models in there. Pardon me while we zoom around here. And this line will center up on the inside of the fascia on the other side so that those, the hip and the valley, run straight through the building at this off angle condition. But that's what those framing members look like and because I didn't have to do this in real life I chose to bevel out the top of this valley rafter. Typically that would just be 90 degrees to the, to the faces but I V'd it out to accommodate the roof planes and by looking right at the very center. I'm going to try to zoom in here. I might be wise to advise viewers to take their Dramamine before watching this video with all this, all this orbiting around. But if you look real closely at the detail of this intersection between the two ridges, the hip and the valley, there's one point exactly right, right here that everything meets, all the planes meet in this point. The valley is V'd out, the hips are uh, cut at a bevel, and so is the, I'm sorry, I probably said that wrong, the ridges are cut with bevel tops as is the hip. Naturally, uh, you wouldn't go through all that trouble in uh, framing this in real life, they would just have flat tops, but the geometry is based on this intersecting point right here. So all the rise and run are calculated basically using that particular point there. And the other thing about this is when I put on the roof planes layer and put the just put the skin on this. This isn't a half inch thick sheathing. It's just a uh, a single plane. But you can see how with the Z flashing in here, every this, the top surface of every one of these members hip ridge valley, jack rafter, common rafter, everything are all in the same plane and then those those planes converge directly at this point. And then we take the take those roof planes back out of there. And if you notice, I can zoom around here. Typically uh, a person is framing uh, and this kind of situation, these two ridges would line up. The top surface of those ridges would line up. But in this case, let's see if I can pivot around here and make this happen. Oh, this model pivots quite oddly because of its size. But if I go in the blue direction and index this top surface, it's at 7 30 seconds of an inch, about not quite a quarter inch different in those ridge heights based on the combination of these two pitches. But I think that last little description gives you an idea of how detailed of a view you can get of the geometry required for this type of framing to get all these, these different things to work together. I'm just going to orbit our way around the model. Let's, let's see, let's click these layers back on here. I put the wall sheeting in that time and put the roof planes in. We'll just build this thing all back up and pivot our way out so you can see uh, the complexity of the framing for this type of, of roof geometry but also the advantage of exploring it with SketchUp to see how these different members and components come together. Now if I've left out, uh, left gaps in this tutorial, uh, things that uh, just overlooked or questions you might have, leave comments or ask questions at the digital job site blog at finehomebuilding.com. Just post comments or questions there if there's uh, something I left out of this model or, uh, or something that I could further explain to help you understand it. 
Uh, another thing is that uh, this model is available at in the component warehouse. I believe I've uploaded it there already. If I haven't, I will. And just type in uh, two pitches and see if you get it. And see if I put the model in there yet. But that's how you would go and get this. And uh, see if I put it in there. Looks like I haven't yet, but I will. When I get done with this video, I'll upload the model so you can download it and explore these different, the different aspects of this model. So this got a bit long, a lot of information there. I hope you find it helpful or at least interesting. And thanks for stopping by the digital job site.